Hey, what's up, guys? Brother Q, and today we're going to be discussing bridges. I'm not going to go down to the hundreds or how many different types of bridges, but we're going to be discussing the typical bridge you see in your neighborhood, and that's more than likely a truss bridge. A bridge is any device or structure that allows you to cross from one thing to another. The different types of bridges are, are pretty much used based off of how you want to handle the loads. And that is a key word that we can talk about with bridges and in physics, load. Load is the capacity of that something can handle or, or can bear, you know. And so when we talk about bridge, we're really specifically thinking about how much weight can this handle. Weight, mass times acceleration, you know, is what this bridge is all about, being able to handle a specific load. The ability to handle the load is based off of how the bridge is structured. And so ultimately when we make a bridge, we're actually creating a, a structure that is able to manipulate the forces associated with the objects that are crossing, you know, that are crossing it. Now, a truss is a specific type of geometric shape that we use in engineering. And you can find trusses everywhere. We're going to highlight them in bridges, but they're using cranes, dollies, like towers, just everywhere. I think they're even using like the arms of the ISS space station or something like that. Yeah, they're, they're really cool ways of handling the structural loads. Why do we like, why do we use trust bridges in engineering? Well, intuitively, most people would think that they would make a square or a rectangle or something like a box to hold up a, make, make, you know, a big structure. And the reason why we don't want to do that is because structures shaped as squares or rectangles typically allow the force that's being applied to the top of them to deform the shape of it and it winds up creating like a, a parallelogram or a rhombus as it rotates the the pressure the force that's being applied to the top of it and so we don't want that because that's what's going to end up in catastrophic failure what we want is to be able to control the way the force is actually being distributed through the legs of whatever structure we're working with with a triangle the weight that is added or put on top of a triangle is added to the joint. Why is this so important? The joint, right, is distributing the, the weight that it has to bear to the legs, to the members. Whereas in a square, not only is it putting the weight on the leg itself, which is actually putting a tension on the the endpoints of it is now also forcing the dynamics of the structure itself to be taken in consideration. Like, what is it made out of? Can it handle that much load? And this has nothing to do with the way it's designed. It's just the dynamics of the material itself. With the triangle, though, the load is distributed through the members by meeting at the endpoints. Engineers love triangles. More triangles more so a typical truss bridge is comprised of an abutment which holds this structure to whichever you know to the ends of it the bottom cord which we you know say the floor or the deck and the top cord and now the legs which is makes up the walls and in which you have your bottom cord top cord these positions here would be your abutments which you know, affix it to the areas in which that you're trying to connect. These are your cords. These are your joints. And these are the legs, pillars, whatever, so on and so forth. Trust bridges are categorized by how they're oriented. So if you can drive through it, that's a through trust bridge. If you can drive on it, that is a deck trust bridge. And if it's not, if there's no ceiling, pretty much, that's a half through bridge. Very simple. All right, there's like over 30 different truss bridges. I'm not gonna discuss all of them. In this video, I'm probably gonna discuss the Warren Bridge, Pratt Truss Bridge, the Howe Truss Bridge, and whatever other one that's somewhere in these links that you can just hit. A Warren Truss Bridge consists of equal triangles, very easy to identify. Equilateral triangles throughout the entire bridge, very easy to identify, very cool to make, very simple to make. And the forces, of course, uh, that the, the, the weight that it has to load, the forces are distributed amongst all of the different triangles individually. Pratt Charles bridges are designed to direct the forces that it has to bear towards the center of the bridge. 
opposite the Pratt Trust Bridge is the Howe Trust Bridge, which pretty much does the complete opposite of the, as the Pratt Trust Bridge, in which the forces are directed outward. Now, when analyzing a bridge, you want to take into consideration which part of your bridge the members and the joints are actually experiencing compression and which parts are experiencing tension. Now, there's different ways of doing that. You have method of members, method of joints. I'm not going to go into detail in that here, but typically most people go down a method of joints. And so pretty much you just want to remember that how your bridge is designed to handle the compression and tension forces. That's the beauty of being an engineer. Now, with your bridge, the joints are going to be held together by glue. But in a real truss bridge, they'll be held together by something called a gusset plate. And that was going to be used to hold the pin. Now, ours are fixed, but in a real truss bridge, there would actually be a pin inside of the joint that allows these members, legs, whatever, to move slightly. And the gusset plate will be used to lock the members into their position. Another thing to remember with truss bridges, the load is only applied to the endpoints of the member. You will never have a load acting on the middle of a member in a bridge. That is just not the purpose of a bridge. So the weight will always be on the deck, on top of the deck, or somewhere here, but it will never be on one of the members. So another key thing about these trusses that we're dealing with is that they all have their plane in the same dimension. So they're called planar trusses. The beauty of being able to analyze these bridges based off their plane is that we can de describe them in a two-dimensional way. So literally as if this is a flat screen and a flat piece of paper and you can just draw your free body diagram based off of this w image here, length and height, you know, length, width and height. Have you seen the trust bridge today? This is an M&M bridge. Why? Because it looks like it has M&Ms in it. Mm. I know, it's like well, bridges, bridges, bridges.